the Florida Press Association, committed to protect the freedoms and advance the professional standards of the press in Florida, and Florida public television and radio stations, dedicated to delivering quality programs and outreach initiatives to educate and enrich Florida communities and families. From the Miniachi Performing Arts Center on the campus of Nova Southeastern University, this is Decision 2006, Before You Vote, the gubernatorial debate. The moderator of tonight's debate is Ray Suarez, senior correspondent for PBS's The News Hour with Jim Lehrer. Good evening, and welcome to Decision 2006, Before You Vote. Tonight, we'll hear from the two leading candidates vying to be Florida's next governor, Congressman Jim Davis and Attorney General Charlie Crist. For the next hour, I'll ask these men questions designed to get to the heart of issues that matter to Floridians. The goal is to give you, our viewers, a better picture of these candidates before you head to the polls on November 7th or earlier if you plan to take advantage of early voting opportunities all over the state. The order of candidate questioning for tonight's debate was determined by a coin toss that took place earlier today. Response times will be monitored by Leadership Florida volunteers from Ernst & Young, Florida Atlantic University, and Monteleone & Associates. Candidates, your supporters and partisans in the audience have been asked to uh, withhold their much-deserved applause until the program is over, understanding that that will come out of their, your time if uh, they spend a lot of time applauding for you. Also understand that if um, you have some trouble following the um, red, yellow, and green light signals to wrap it up, uh, you'll also be taking from your own time for responses later in the program tonight. I want to begin this debate by giving each candidate one minute to make an opening statement. Up first, Jim Davis, who's represented Florida's 11th congressional district since 1996. He's the Democratic Party's candidate for governor. Mr. Davis, you have one minute. Good evening, and thank you to Nova University and Leadership Florida for sponsoring this debate. I want to offer a special word of support for the workers that are outside in the street tonight fighting for fair wages. I support your cause. Also want to thank the viewers for joining us this evening. Tonight we have a clear choice about the future of our state. Charlie Krish says, stay the course. He wants to continue the course we've been on for the last eight years. I'm running for governor because I think we can do better. If you're satisfied with where our schools are right now, nearly last in the country in graduation rate and SAT score, soaring property taxes and skyrocketing insurance prices, then Charlie Crist is your candidate. But I believe in our great state we can do better. As a parent, I will fight as governor to improve our schools so that we start having some of the highest SAT scores and graduation rates in the country. I have a plan to reduce property taxes next year for homeowners and to fight insurance companies to lower insurance premiums so that everyone in Florida can have a chance to live the American dream. I look forward to spending some time with you this evening. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Now we'll hear from Charlie Crist, Florida's Attorney General and the Republican Party's candidate for governor. Mr. Crist, you have one minute for your opening statement. Thank you, Ray. Thank you to PBS for sponsoring the debate tonight. I look forward to this exchange of ideas. This is an important moment for Florida's future. I look forward to talking about responsible plans to lower insurance rates for the people of the state of Florida, not risky plans. I look forward to talking about keeping your property taxes down. I want to double your homestead exemption. And I want to make sure that the Save Our Home 3% cap is portable for you. And I want to make sure that we protect Florida's children. It's the most important thing that government does. And I know how fundamentally important it is to improve education, to pay our teachers more. I'm the last guy in this race that actually graduated from a public high school here in Florida, St. Petersburg High School in 1974. I look forward to the discussion ahead. I know it's going to be a good debate. It'll be on a good level. And this is about Florida's future. Thank you very much. And thank you, Mr. Christ. Now it's time to question the candidates. My questions tonight will fall within some clearly defined topic areas. Those topic areas include education, insurance and taxes, health care and social issues. I may also elect to ask a few miscellaneous questions that don't fit neatly into any of those topics. Each candidate will have one minute to respond to my initial question. I reserve the right to ask follow-up questions. 
These follow-ups may be directed at one or both of the candidates. Responses to follow-up questions will be limited to 30 seconds. We'll begin with you, Mr. Davis. The FCATs, the Florida Comprehensive Assessment Test, have been a hot issue all campaign season. If elected, would you end the use of high, a single high-stakes test to determine receipt of a high school diploma? As governor, I will end the use of the FCAT as we know it. Right now, the FCAT is used to punish children, teachers, and schools, and Charlie wants to continue this. I think this is one of the reasons why our schools are not performing as they should for graduation rate and SAT scores. As a parent of two sons, Peter and William, in public schools in Tampa, I want the FCAT to be used as a learning tool to help every parent in the state understand how their child's doing and how they can do better. And when we identify where a child's falling behind, we help them catch up early in the school year with after school, before school, or even summer school. If we continue the path we're on right now, we're not going to have the graduates we need to have a healthy economy and high wages in this state. Today, out of every 10 ninth graders, only two will finish college. We can do better, and I will change the FCAT in a way that helps children succeed and parents be a part of their children's education. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Now a response from Mr. Christ for one minute. Thank you. I think it's very important that we continue to take a measure of what's happening in the classroom. Our children deserve nothing less. We have to make sure that they get a year's worth of knowledge in a year's time. And testing while tough is important to continue. After all, life is a test. You know, the testing and accountability began under our great Governor Lawton Childs, was put forward then by Governor Bush. And when Governor Childs brought it into being, he said, this is going to be tough. He said that we must not flinch from what we're doing here. And we can never flinch from doing what's right. It's right to take a measure of what happens in the classroom on behalf of our children. And you know why? They don't get a second chance to go to elementary school or to middle school or to high school. And if we let them down, we let them down forever. They have the right to achieve their dreams. Making sure that we continue to improve education by knowing what's happening in the classroom is the way to do it. And I'll make sure we do what's right for Florida's children. Mr. Chris, pursuant to that answer, educational leaders and members of the Bush administration like yourself have praised the FCATs in their usefulness as a tool to identify poorly performing schools. But does it place the burden where it truly belongs? When you're identifying problem schools, do the students end up paying for their school's shortcomings in the 12th grade? I don't think so. I think what's important is that we find out what schools are performing well and which ones are not. This is very fundamental and this is not complicated. When we grade our schools A through F, my opponent doesn't think we should anymore. I believe that we should because I think that the definition has to be crystal clear as to how these schools are performing for our children. If we are willing to grade nine and 10 year old children, we ought to be willing to grade the schools that are supposed to perform for those children. I also think that we need to raise teacher salaries and I have a plan to do it. I'd refer you to my website, those of you sitting at home, it's just charliechris.com. We have a detailed plan of making sure that the top 25% of our teachers get a 10% salary increase and we can do it within this budget. These are important issues. Education is vital. If these children are going to be able to live their dreams, we've got to continue to make sure that schools are accountable in an appropriate way, in a way that doesn't punish, but in a way that helps. Mr. Davis, you have a minute to respond. Charlie wants to stay the course with the way we're using the FCAT. What he just described is using the FCAT now as a basis for teacher salaries, to decide that teachers are going to be paid based on how a child performs on a single standardized test. I think that's wrong. As governor, I will stop that. Charlie also believes that the FCAT ought to be a basis just to measure children and not to do anything about it. As a parent of two boys in public school, simply measuring how children are doing and not finding out how they do better doesn't accomplish anything. It's one of the reasons why we are now 49th in the country in SAT scores and graduation rate. We can do better, and we will do better when we stop using the FCAT to punish children, teachers, and schools, and instead use it as a learning tool. And focus teacher salaries, not based on a standardized test, but on making sure that they have the support they need so they can teach and be the strongest teacher in the classroom that our kids need to help them succeed once the FCAT's used as a learning tool. Mr. Davis, the next question goes to you. At a time when voters around Florida are telling public opinion researchers they are incensed at their local and state government over taxes, how would Florida public schools, among the lowest funded in the country, get any more money to work with? 
Well, what's happened in Tallahassee for the last eight years, there have been $20 billion in special interest tax giveaways and private contracts, which Charlie Crist has supported. And that's money that we could have been using to invest in our schools. Today, our teachers are among the lowest paid in the country. We have hundreds of teachers who will be driving to Georgia in the morning instead of teaching. Almost half our teachers are leaving after five years right now. That's why I have a plan to raise teacher salaries by almost $4,000 next year is the first step in getting to the national average. And I do that without raising taxes. We need to have a highly qualified teacher in the classroom. And this is the best single investment we can make to help our children begin to graduate and have the kind of jobs they need to succeed. So as governor, I will veto these special interest tax giveaways and make sure instead the money's invested in our workers, our schools, and our teachers. Mr. Davis, quick follow-up. Uh, please be more specific about how you would lower taxes and raise teacher salaries at the same time. By vetoing special interest tax giveaways, we will have the money to invest in education. To lower taxes, what I propose to do is a $1 billion property tax cut next year for all property owners. This would be for renters, homeowners, and for business owners. Charlie has a much different approach. He doesn't want to do anything to lower property taxes until four years from now. We cannot wait four more years. So I will lower school property taxes, but I will also make sure that these tax giveaways in Tallahassee stop, and we use that money to put into education instead. Mr. Christ, you have 30 seconds to respond to that follow-up. Thank you. I think it's very important that we continue to increase the funding in education. This past year alone, the budget was increased almost $1.8 billion more for education in our state. The gains have been dramatic, and that's true leadership. And you don't have to raise taxes to do it. Tallahassee needs to do exactly what you do at home, live within your means. I'm running against somebody who wants to raise your taxes. He didn't tell you that he wants to bring the intangibles tax back. That would be taxing seniors and savers in Florida. That's not the right way to go. We now move next to the topic of insurance and taxes. I think we were already there while we were in education. Around the state, in places hit by some of the worst storms, and in places that weren't hit at all, insurance rates have soared. What, if anything, can a state executive do about the decisions of private businesses regarding the potential high cost of doing business in a state vulnerable to hurricanes? Mr. Christ? I think we can do a lot of things, and we're on the path to doing so right now. Just recently, the cabinet created the Joint Underwriting Association to help out small businesses, mom and pops across this state, so that they now can get reinsurance. It's also important that we stop what I call the shell game in the insurance business, where national insurance companies will set up a Florida subsidiary that will specifically go to the bureaucrats in Tallahassee to try to justify these 80, 90, 100 percent rate increases, and that is wrong. We also have to stop what I call cherry picking, where some companies, national insurance companies again, will want to write auto insurance to 18 million Florida consumers, but they won't write property insurance in our state. Yet they'll write it in other states. We ought to mandate that they're, if they're going to be here for the good stuff, the lucrative auto insurance, they ought to be here for property insurance too. And we shouldn't do what my opponent wants to do. It's a risky scheme. Three papers have already said so. He wants to bail out the insurance companies on the back of Florida taxpayers, and that's wrong. Uh, Mr. Chris, just to clarify, does the governor have the statutory power to uh, regulate the insurance business in a way that, uh, al that allows you to, for instance, dictate which insurance they can write and uh, what they can also write if they want to get at, at what you say is the good stuff? No, of course not. The governor is not the king. The governor is one part of the three branches of government. And you have to work hard. You have to work every day. And as your governor, I'll come to work every day. Jim, as you know, you can't govern from an empty chair. It's important to make sure that you show up, you do what's right, you work with the legislature to get things done in a positive fashion. And as governor, that's exactly what I would do. That's the way you lead. You lead by being a good executive, by being a good listener, and by doing what's right for the people of Florida. And that's why I'm running for governor. Mr. Davis, you have one minute to respond. Charlie and I have a different view. It's not just about showing up, it's about standing up. And for four years as Attorney General, Charlie did nothing to stand up to these insurance companies. They've had record prices and record profits, and many Attorney Generals around the state have taken action. But Charlie did nothing. And what he's describing tonight, uh, shell games and cherry picking, don't lower rates next year. 
but I have a plan that does. My plan next year will lower insurance premiums by as much as 40%. By lowering the cost of reinsurance to insurance companies and forcing insurance companies to pass those savings along to their consumers immediately. I will say something to these insurance companies they haven't heard in years, no. I will stand up to them as Charlie failed to do so. Tonight we're simply hearing some slogans. After four years, Charlie had a chance to stand up. He didn't. I will. My plan will lower insurance premiums next year for all consumers. Mr. Davis, the next question goes to you first. Save Our Homes has been a popular program. Do you support making the home insurance cap portable? And how would that work? I support looking at portability, but only as part of comprehensive property tax reform. And I also believe, unlike Charlie, we need to do something next year. My plan is to lower property taxes next year by $1 billion for renters, business owners, and homeowners. There are three important differences between my plan and Charlie's. Charlie's does nothing for four years. I don't think we can wait four more years. Secondly, four years from now, Charlie does lower some homeowners insurance, real estate prices, but does nothing for renters, does nothing for business owners. And the Florida Chamber of Commerce has pointed out that Charlie's lowering property taxes for some homeowners by raising property taxes on first time homeowners, on renters and business owners. We are literally driving people out of business and out of their homes today, and we need to take action next year. Charlie hasn't offered anything that'll make a difference next year, I have. Let's start lowering property taxes next year by $1 billion as a down payment to making sure that people pay the cost of growth in Tallahassee, not property owners at home. Mr. Christ, you have a minute to respond as well. Thank you. We need to make sure that we have the Save Our Home 3% cap portable. Jim unfortunately mischaracterizes what I'm trying to do. We don't have to wait four years. We can do it next year. If you work with the men and women of the Florida legislature and convince them to put a constitutional amendment on the ballot, we can have it done in a year. So what's important to understand are what the realities are, what the possibilities are, and what the goals should be. The goal should be to lower your property taxes, and I will do it. I want to double your homestead exemption. My opponent does not. He wants, he's worried about the money going to government. He wants to be the government's governor. I want to be the people's governor. I want to fight for you just the way I have fought for you as your attorney general. In fact, one newspaper recently wrote that Charlie Crist has been the people's lawyer. I want to be the people's governor, and I will always fight for you. If you want somebody who wants to fight for government, my opponent's your guy. If you want somebody who's going to fight for you, Charlie Crist is who you ought to vote for two weeks from today. Thank you, Mr. Christ. You get the next question. You mentioned uh, your advocacy of doubling the homestead exemption. Uh, tell me a little bit more about how you would do that. The revenue foregone by the state, uh, there's some very high dollar costs associated with that. Where would you make up the money without blowing a hole in Florida's budget? We won't blow a hole in the budget at all. You have to understand Florida's budget and our thriving economy to appreciate the answer. You make a, a question with a premise that presumes that if you lower taxes one place, you have to raise them somewhere else. That's just not the case. Government needs to live within its means. This is the argument that my opponent makes and how he wants to try to protect government. I want to protect people. I want to make sure that your, your taxes go down. By doubling the homestead exemption, which went into effect in 1980 at $25,000, I want to raise it to $50,000. People who are on a fixed income, seniors in our state, deserve that kind of relief and they need it desperately now. And I want to fight for them and make sure that we do it. You know, local governments have really had exploded budgets lately. In the past five years alone, from $16 billion to over $22 billion. What are they spending that money on? A good series of articles in the St. Pete Times recently talked about Hillsborough County. Not getting appropriate bids not spending the money more wisely, and not negotiating better. They need to. Mr. Chris, thank you. Mr. Davis, you get a minute to respond. <clears throat> Charlie's offering something that won't take effect for four years. As a homeowner, I think we need to do something next year. Uh, Charlie's also saying that he's not going to do anything for people that are renting and people that own their own business. These are some of the property owners that are being squeezed most in this state. Why is this problem developed? It's developed because the special interests in Tallahassee are not paying their share of the cost of growth. 
Charlie wants to continue to stay the course. He wants to continue to force local property owners to pay the entire cost of growth. And that's why developers have put $5 million into his campaign, because they want to stay the course as well. They like the way this is happening now. There is a property tax revolt in this state. There is a backyard rebellion. And that's why my plan will help all property tax owners next year, $1 billion as a down payment. And we cannot afford to not to provide some relief to businesses and renters who are suffering, and many of whom are at risk of going out of business or thinking about leaving the state. We can do better than what Charlie's talking about tonight. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Before I ask another question, I want to take a moment to remind our viewers they're watching Decision 2006. Before you vote, the gubernatorial debate being broadcast live from the main campus of Nova Southeastern University in Broward County, Florida. Now back to the questions. The next one goes to you, Mr. Davis. A demographic wave is breaking over the country in the next 20 years as the boomers, that's including the three of us, um, enter the ranks of the elderly. Florida will get there first. How will the state handle the medical costs, not only of the very large senior population, but the very large number of low wage and service workers who get no health care coverage at work and their children? Well, I'll start with the seniors. As governor, I will fight these drug companies to lower the price of prescription drugs for seniors and their families. I'll stand at the drug companies as I stood up to George Bush and the pharmaceutical industry in Washington to lower prescription drug prices and to allow seniors to reimport drugs to Florida. I'll also fight to give small businesses a chance to pull their purchasing power, to get lower prices for health insurance for their workers and their families. And I won't do something that Charlie is proposing. Charlie thinks we should force seniors into HMOs. I think that's wrong. I think when our seniors are at a time in their life when they need us most, we should not be forcing them into an HMO where they won't get the care they need. Ultimately, we need to lift wages in this state. And the single most powerful thing I can do as governor to make that happen is to start investing in our schools, investing in our workers, so we can produce more highly skilled workers. If we continue the path that Charlie's advocating, we'll be last in the country in graduation rate and SAT score. That's not going to produce the types of jobs, the type of wages that Floridians need, including when they retire. Time, Mr. Davis. Mr. Christ, you have a minute to respond as well. Sure. There's a lot we can do to improve health care in our state, and I'm excited about the opportunity to do it. Let me tell you about how I want to make sure that we import prescription drugs that are safe from Canada. I think we need to work with our friends in Washington to lift the ban that exists on that now. Unfortunately, my opponent voted against allowing that to happen. Tonight, he tells you he wants it to happen. I'm not really sure what to believe. But what I do believe is that we need to do this, and we need to do it now. There's an awful lot of senior citizens watching at home tonight that have to pay exorbitant prices for prescription drugs. We need to do everything we can in addition to allowing the import of safe Canadian prescription drugs to go ahead and lower the price by negotiating better with the major pharmaceutical companies. I'm committed to doing that and I know that we can. We can issue a prescription drug discount card to every Floridian and use the negotiating power of almost 18 million Floridians when we go with those uh, pharmaceutical companies and negotiate the prices down. Walmart did it, Target's done it, Florida can do it even better. Thank you, Mr. Christ. You, the next question goes to you. Health care costs... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Did, uh, I didn't give you a chance to respond, Mr. Davis. Thank you. Charlie's simply mistaken. I have voted in Congress fighting George Bush and the drug industry uh, to lower drug prices and to allow reimportation. Charlie, on the other hand, has done nothing on this. For four years as Attorney General, he had the chance to do what other Attorney Generals have done, including local government officials. They have taken on the drug companies. They have taken on the Congress and George Bush, as I had. He did nothing. And tonight we have a promise. I think it's too late. Charlie had his chance to stand up for seniors, to stand up for Floridians to lower drug prices, and he didn't. I've been fighting that fight in Washington, and I will as governor. And there's no negotiating with these drug companies. You've got to stand firm. You've got to stand tough. I've done that in Washington in Congress. I will as governor. We will force these drug companies to lower their prices so that more seniors and their families can have the prescription drugs they need. Uh, and Mr. Chris, let me uh, get a response from you on the state role in holding those costs down when they're rising twice the rate of the cost of living. What does the governor, what does the government of the state of Florida do uh, to hold health care costs down? 
we do exactly what I just talked about. We negotiate against these pharmaceutical companies. And let me correct Jim. He says I did nothing. That's coming from a guy who doesn't even go to work. What he's done is a lot as the Attorney General of this state. And I'm proud of the record of our office and what the good people in the Attorney General's office have done. We sued Merck and we got results. We've gone after pharmaceutical companies. We've made sure that prescription drugs and drugs that are coming from other states even pass landmark legislation to make sure that your drugs are safe with a pedigree paper so that you can have a chain of custody, if you will, to make sure that these drugs are safe when they get to you. We've been very active and very aggressive in making sure that Floridians are treated fairly. Also, we've done that in civil rights. I've got a record that I'm proud of. I have fought for civil rights. My opponent took a long time to come around to the right idea about that on Pitts and Lee. And I don't understand it, Jim. It doesn't take you 16 years to figure out right from wrong. I knew it was wrong, and that's why I co-sponsored the compensation for those men when I was in the legislature. Time, Mr. Christ. The next question goes to Mr. Davis. When Floridians, along with the country and the world, looked on as Terry Schiavo's family fought over how her life would end, it started a lot of family conversations about end-of-life decision. Was that case handled the right way, and how would a state government led by you move to make sure situations are like that are less likely to happen in the future? There is no clear difference between Charlie Crist and me than on this issue. I went to Washington and took on the entire United States Congress and George Bush to stop the federal government from intervening in the tragic life of Terry Schiavo and interfering in the affairs of our state. It was a tough battle. Charlie Crist took the day off. He didn't take a stand. I did. And that's what I'll do as governor. I will make sure that the government stays out of our personal life. And I not, will not be afraid of the tough battles. Charlie keeps kidding me. You've seen the empty chair commercial. It's about showing up. No, it's about standing up. It's about standing up when it's tough. Just as I stood up to George Bush and the oil companies when they tried to drill for oil right off the beaches of Florida. I asked Charlie Chris to join me and that was a tough fight. He refused to stand up on that day too. I've stood up for Florida to keep the federal government from interfering in our lives. I've stood up to George Bush to keep our beaches safe. I'll do the same thing as governor. I won't just show up, I'll stand up. Mr. Christ, you have a minute to respond as well. Thank you very much. Jim doesn't sound very happy tonight, and I guess I can understand why. It's important in a race for governor that you talk about what you've done and that the rhetoric that you're talking about during the campaign actually matches the record that you have. When the Terry Schiavo came, came up, when that case came up, I stood where I believed it should be. It's not the place for government. And that's why I stayed out involved, uh, because it wasn't the right thing to do in my, my point of view. Some decisions, I believe, should be for God and family. My opponent talks about standing up. My opponent missed over 300 votes in the United States Congress while he was campaigning. You know, I watched Senator Bill Nelson on this very stage last night. You know what he said, Jim, when he got here? He said, the most important thing I do is get up every day and go to work. And you know what? You didn't just have an empty chair. You have, you have the second worst attendance record in the United States Congress. It is wrong. You violate a public trust when you do it, and you shouldn't do that. The next question goes to you, Mr. Christ. Do you favor changes in the current laws concerning abortion and would you use your position as governor to advocate for change? I'm pro-life on this issue, but I also understand that it's very important to respect the views of others, and I do. I think what's important is that we try to promote a culture of life, and I have a plan to do it with an adoption plan that, again, you can see at my website at charliechris.com. I don't think it's important to change the law. What I do believe is important is that we change hearts and not the law. I know this is a sensitive issue. I know that it's difficult for many people. I'm pro-life and I'm proud of it, but I don't think that I should impose my will on other people as a result of it. I think, as I said before, Ray, what we ought to do is change hearts and not change Florida law. Mr. Davis, you have a minute to respond to the same question. When the South Dakota governor signed a law that took away a woman's freedom to choose, including in cases of rape or incest or when her life was in danger, Charlie immediately responded by saying he would sign a similar law. I think that's wrong. I don't think that's what's right for Florida. 
And I think it's important to stand up and say what you really believe in. And I don't think we'll hear Charlie say that again tonight because, it's, as he said, it's difficult to do so. Charlie said when the government tried to get involved in the personal life of Terry Schiavo that he stood up by staying out. We need a governor who's not going to stay out of difficult decisions, who's going to stand up. Stand up to this very powerful insurance lobby, which Charlie's refused to do for four years. I have a lifetime voting record of 93% in the Congress. And I have missed votes while I've been campaigning for governor. But in, in Tallahassee, I will stand up in the tough moments, in the difficult decisions. I will stand up to this insurance lobby to lower insurance premiums by 40% next year. I will fight for the change we need to make sure that property taxes are affordable Time, and more sir. people can afford their own homes. The next question goes to you, Mr. Davis. In Mr. Christ gets to respond. Okay. You're only as good as your rundown, sir. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, you know, uh, what's important about this issue is to do what's right. Do what's right in your heart. And make sure that what you talk about during the course of the campaign is something that you've actually done during your, your life as a uh, public servant. I take public service very seriously. Two weeks from today, you have an important decision to make about who the next governor will be. Change is coming. I know that this is the first time that Jim or I have run for governor of Florida. So change is coming to Tallahassee. You at home have to decide which change you want. I'm a happy warrior. I'm an optimist. I look forward to Florida's future. And while we go back and forth on some issues tonight, I think we want as a positive leader for our state, somebody who understands that Florida's best days are ahead. I understand that. I'm excited about the future of this state. I'm looking forward to lead Florida into a great and prosperous future by cutting your taxes, reducing insurance rates, and making sure that children get the very best education possible. Thank you, Ray, for the extra time. And Mr. Davis, uh, you get a chance for rebuttal. Change is coming depending on who our next governor is. Uh, what we're hearing from Charlie tonight is staying the course on education. This course has taken us to 49th in the country in SAT scores and graduation rate. We're at a time that more is expected of our children than ever before. Charlie's response to exploding property taxes is four more years. We can't wait four more years. That's why my plan reduces property taxes by $1 billion next year. Charlie's done nothing as Attorney General to stand up to these insurance companies for four years. We can't afford more of that same. I think we need change. I'll say something to these insurance companies they haven't heard in a long time, no. I'll fight to repeal the law that was just passed that allows them to raise premiums without even getting permission. Charlie didn't stand up on that day either. He had his chance. I will stand up to these insurance companies. We'll lower insurance premiums next year by as much as 40%. Mr. Davis, the next question goes to you first. Tens of thousands of people move to this state every month. And I'll bet many of the people in our audience tonight think they're all trying to get somewhere on the same roads at the same time. If this state is going to continue this rate of growth, can it continue to use water, build housing and roads and commercial space in the same way it's been doing until now? We can continue to grow, and I think our growth is a blessing. But we need to start managing our growth. And I will do that to protect our environment, our community, our heritage. And I think that's one of the reasons why the Sierra Club has endorsed me in this campaign, because of my record on the environment. But the big question is, who pays the cost of growth? Since Charlie was the education commissioner, our local property taxes for schools mandated by the state have doubled. And that's because the special interests in Tallahassee have not been paying their share of the cost of growth. Charlie wants to continue the course we're on now, which forces local property owners to be stuck with the bill for growth. That's why developers and special interests have put millions of dollars into his campaign. I think we need a different approach. I will make sure that the special interests in Tallahassee pay their share of the cost, and that's how we can lower property taxes next year as a down payment and begin to give everybody in the state a chance to live the American dream, to come to Florida, to afford your own home, and to enjoy this wonderful natural beauty that surrounds us. Mr. Christ, your response? Sure, thank you. Florida's growing and she's growing rapidly. We grow by about 1,200 people every single day. And that truly is a blessing, but it also poses challenges to our great state. You know, Florida's second to none. She's the greatest state in America. You know, I love Ronald Reagan. And he used to talk about America as the shining city on the hill. And I believed him. And if that's true, then Florida's the shining state on the mountaintop. You're right, Ray. Everybody wants to be a Floridian. 
from New York, from Pennsylvania, from Michigan, and can you blame them? Look at this weather we're having today. It's a glorious place to be, and the quality of life is second to none. But we've got to face challenges responsibly. We've got to make sure that we have our infrastructure that is ready for roads, for schools, to make sure that we protect our environment. I supported the Everglades Restoration Act. It's a historic act that Washington and Jim and his friends up there have not met their obligation on, and that's unfortunate. The state of Florida has put $2 billion forward in this plan. Washington, only $700 million. I don't know if you've ever sponsored a bill, Jim, to give us more for the Everglades protection. Time, I'd sir. like to see it. The next question goes to Mr. Christ. Illegal immigration has added to this state's workforce and also to its government costs in education, in health care, in law enforcement. What will you, as governor, tell the President of the United States and your own delegation to Capitol Hill about how to proceed in addressing this challenge? We need to do everything we can to secure our border. That's fundamentally important. I believe that we need to stop illegal immigration in order to keep the promise of legal immigration alive. My friend Senator Mel Martinez has what I believe is a very responsible plan that he's proposed in Washington. That plan would secure the border. That plan would stop illegal immigration. And that plan would give people the opportunity to earn citizenship, much as my grandfather, Adam Christodoulos, did years and years ago. He came to this country when he was only 14 years old. He could not speak the language. He didn't have a job. And he didn't know anybody. But he worked hard, shining shoes for a living. Not a glamorous job, but good, honest work. That's what we need to continue to encourage in our country. We are that shining city on the hill. We need to continue to be that because the promise of America is what keeps hope alive in so many people all around the globe and in Cuba tonight. Mr. Davis, you have a minute to respond on addressing illegal immigration. As governor, uh, I will fight as I have in Congress, often standing up against the Congress and against George Bush to make sure the federal government begins to secure the border, put the manpower, technology, and training in to secure the border. I agree with Charlie on Senator Martinez's plan. I think it's a good one to have strict and fair path to citizenship. But I disagree with Charlie, who thinks that we ought to offer driver's licenses to people that aren't here who aren't here legally. It is critical that when we have immigration reform, that we do not send a message to people encouraging them to come to the United States to come to Florida illegally. If people are visiting Florida, we want to treat them with respect. We want to have a program where they can apply for citizenship with a strict and fair path. But under Charlie's approach, I'm concerned that we will be encouraging more people to enter the state of Florida illegally. And I just don't think the taxpayers of the state should or can't afford to bear that burden. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Now we're going to move into a special portion of this debate agreed to by the candidates. This brief round will give the candidates the opportunity to question each other. Questions must be asked in 15 seconds and answered in one minute. No follow-up questions will be permitted. Mr. Davis, you'll ask the first question. Charlie, for your running mate, you've chosen a Tallahassee insider who opposes stem cell research, class size reduction, and disagrees with what I think was Governor Bush's appropriate handling of the Confederate flag. What does this tell us about your vision for the state of Florida? Thank you for the question, Jim. What it tells you is that I've picked a man who is an honorable man. He's worked hard. He represented Southwest Florida very well, and I'm proud of him. Let me tell you about my beliefs on stem cell research. I think we need to continue to advance it. I think it's important to do so. Some in my party don't feel that way, but I'm running as Charlie Crist for governor of the state of Florida. And what's at the top of the ticket is really the most important thing. It's good to have good running mates, and I think that you do. I served with Daryl Jones, and he's a good man. But what's really important is who's going to be governor of the state of Florida in two weeks from now, the governor-elect will be decided. At this time, on that night, we'll probably know the outcome of this race. We have to have somebody who's positive about Florida's future, who's tolerant of other people, who has a compassionate heart and cares for Floridians, and most importantly, who listens to them and learns from them and understands them. I've done that as the Attorney General of the state of Florida. I'll do that as your next governor. I look forward to the race ahead, and I look forward to earning your vote. Thank you, Mr. Chris. Now, what is your first question for Mr. Davis? A tragic miscarriage of justice occurred when Freddie Pitts and Wilbert Lee were wrongfully convicted and imprisoned for a crime they did not commit. Nothing can right that wrong. Yet in 1990, Jim, you made a wrong worse by incredibly voting against compensation for Pitts and Lee. 
Can you explain why it took a governor's race and your primary opponent attacking you for you to realize that this was a mistake? I agree with Charlie that I made a mistake and a terrific miscarriage of justice was carried out with respect to Freddie Pitts and Wilbur Lee. And I should have voted for the bill to compensate them. After I realized my mistake, I went to see them privately out of respect for them and asked for their forgiveness. And I'm humbled that not only did they forgive me, but they've offered their support. And Mr. Freddie Pitts is here tonight and I'm very proud to have his support and his forgiveness. I'm proud of my record on civil rights. I have stood up for racial equality and social justice as my grandfather Cody Fowler did as a leader in the civil rights movement in the 1950s with one of our greatest governors, Leroy Collins. And I believe one of the most important civil rights is the right to vote. Charlie stood side by side with Katherine Harris when the right to vote was denied to many, many African Americans and other Floridians. That was wrong. Charlie sat on the cabinet while thousands of people, many African Americans, have been denied their right to vote. That was wrong too. Charlie had his chance to stand up for free and fair elections. He didn't. I will as governor. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Do you have a second question for Mr. Christ? I do. <laughs> I thought you would. <laughs> You're right. What's happened? As governor, I believe next year we should have property tax relief, not just for homeowners, but for renters and for small business owners. Charlie, what you're suggesting is to do nothing for four years for those property owners. Why should renters, why should small business owners have to wait four years for you to do anything? And according to Florida Chamber of Commerce, under your plan, you'll actually increase their taxes. There you go again, Jim. You need to be truthful in this debate tonight. I'm not advocating waiting four years. I'm advocating doing it next year, just like you have talked about. Except I don't balance it out by raising taxes on other people. I want to double your homestead exemption. I think it's important to go from the $25,000 to the $50,000 exemption, particularly for those of you who are on a fixed income. But for all Floridians, I think it's important that we make the Save Our Home 3% tax cap portable. People all over Florida tell me that they feel trapped in their home whether they're a young family wanting to get into a larger home, or like my mom and dad, who still live in the same home in St. Petersburg where they raised four children and probably don't need that much square footage. They want to go to a more modest home or even a condominium, but they don't because they don't want to take the tax hit that'll happen when they lose the advantage of the cap. My opponent wants to raise your taxes. He's the first guy, I think, since Walter Mondale, who actually has admitted he wants to raise taxes if elected governor, the intangible tax. I don't think that's right. I think it's wrong. I think you're taxed enough. Let's move on. Thank you, Mr. Christ. Now you can ask the final question in the round. Florida's Cuban-American community is troubled by your visit, Jim, to Communist Cuba and your meetings with officials of the Castro regime. Jewish Floridians are concerned about your meeting with terrorist leader Yasser Arafat. Recently, you apologized to Florida's African-American community. Tonight, will you apologize to Florida's Cuban-American and Jewish-American communities for your meetings with these terrorist leaders? Charlie, I have voted and fought six times in Congress to uphold this embargo, which is the single most powerful thing we can do to fight for freedom and democracy for the Cuban people. You've never done that, and I have. Secondly, I did go to Cuba. I went down there to see for myself the plight of suffering and misery of the Cuban people because I represent many wonderful people in the Cuban community in Tampa with family down there. I worship with the Bishop of the Methodist Church. I met with the opposition leaders to the government. I came back more bound and determined ever to push for freedom and democracy in Cuba and I'll do that as governor. As far as my record on the state of Israel, I have a strong record of standing up for peace and security. I've met in Washington with Congressman Robert Wexler and many strong supporters of the nation of Israel to try to pressure Yasser Arafat for peace and security. You have no record on standing up for Israel, but you stand here tonight with some self-serving political talk about my record. I've been fighting the fight. I've spent time in the Middle East. I've stood up to many of these leaders. Time, sir. I will fight for peace and security in Israel as governor as well. Thank you both. That ends this round of the debate. We're coming to the close, but before we do, I'd like to take some of the time remaining to ask the candidates a few additional questions. As before, the candidates will have one minute to respond to my questions, and I may elect to ask brief follow-ups. 
Mr. Chris, analysts in this state have looked at the state as a whole, and especially the big metropolitan areas, and worried about the hollowing out of the middle class. They see in some metropolitan markets, more and more of the population is rich and poor. Does the government, does the governor, have a role in aiding middle class Floridians, or is this merely the operation of the market? No question about it. The governor does have a role. So does the attorney general. And I have fought hard to make sure that all people in Florida are treated fairly, particularly in the area of economics. I have fought the big utility companies and the big phone companies, along with a great Floridian, in my opinion, a man named Jack Shreve. Jack Shreve, who happens to be a Democrat and works in the attorney general's office, we've worked together to get billions of dollars of rate reductions for utilities and, and millions of dollars of rate reductions from phone bills. That's the kind of activism I think you want in a governor. The people deserve an advocate. I've been an advocate. I have a record. I don't ch just talk about these things to, tonight or during the course of this campaign. I've actually produced and done them. I've been in my chair. I've turned up for office. I've shown up and made sure that the people get what they wanted when they elected a public servant. This is important. Public service is not to be taken lightly. And when you're somebody like my opponent who doesn't show up for work, you pay. That's not right, and it's not fair. Time, sir. Mr. Davis, one minute to respond. Speaking of showing up, Charlie, I want to show you what showed up in my mailbox not too long ago. This is my insurance premium statement. And I'm fortunate because my insurance is only scheduled to go up 40%. As Attorney General, Charlie never showed up, never stood up to these insurance companies. For four years, he did crisis and record profits. I will do something he hasn't done. I will stand up to this very powerful insurance lobby with a plan to lower the cost of insurance next year and to force insurance companies to pass along savings of as much as 40 percent. My plan will also put citizens out of business. Charlie wants to continue citizens. We cannot afford to stay the course on insurance. Insurance companies have given $2 million to this campaign because they want to stay the course. They like record prices, record profits. I'll stand up to them. We'll lower insurance premiums next year under my plan. This is all but certain, Mr. Davis, to go down as the most expensive political campaign in Florida history. We've got a few days left. Something may happen. I don't know. Is there anything wrong with that? And if there is, what can candidates do to change that? There's something terribly wrong with the amount of money in politics right now. But the reason is because the special interests are pretty much running the show up there right now. The insurance companies have gotten everything they want out of this Florida legislature. And we've seen what happened when nobody, including Charlie as the Attorney General, has been willing to stand up to them. They got a law passed that allows them to increase our premiums without even getting permission from the state. I will end that. I will stand up for homeowners, for business owners who are literally being driven out of their homes and driven out of business now. That's why the insurance companies have put $2 million into the campaign against me. They like this system. They want to stay the course. And Charlie hasn't said anything tonight about insurance because he has no plan. It's more the same what we've seen for four years. If we don't lower insurance premiums in this state, our wonderful state as we know it will not continue to be a place where business can prosper and people can live their golden years and start their own family and have their own home. And I will change that. Mr. Christ, you have a minute to respond as well on campaign costs. It's amazing to me how inaccurate my opponent is. I've actually sued Martian McLennan. I've sued AON, one of the largest insurance companies in the country, and got $8 million back for Floridians as your attorney general. He calls that nothing. Well, I guess he wasn't in the chair the day when that went out either. What's important is that you have somebody who's a proven advocate for you in the attorney general. I'm proud of the work that we have done, and I'm proud of the record. My opponent talks about promises that he wants to have you believe tonight, but he doesn't have a record that backs it up. In order to have somebody you can trust and have confidence in as the next governor of the state of Florida, you don't want to only believe what we say to you tonight or during this campaign. The rhetoric that we talk about during the campaign needs to match the record that we have. I have a record as Attorney General fighting for you, and I enjoy it. And I'll keep fighting for you and be an advocate for you as your next governor. Don't believe Jim. He just has it wrong. He doesn't show up. And unfortunately, he didn't work very hard. But I've done my homework. 
I understand what the record is of the Attorney General, and we'll keep fighting for you if you elect me your next governor. Uh, a brief follow-up, sir, uh, 30 seconds if you could. Uh, you didn't talk at all about campaign finance. And um, this is, as I said, one of the most expensive campaigns, about to be the most expensive campaign in Florida history. Why is that? Is it right? Well, like you say, we have a few days left, so we really don't know. But we'll find out. What I think is important is that we make sure we have accountability as it relates to any campaign activity. And we have that in our state. But there are some things I think we need to look at. You know, some people have offered to give me money that I told them, frankly, I didn't want it. One was Florida Power and Light. I felt that it was wrong. I don't want people to give me money and ever expect that they're going to get anything except a thank you note and good government. And that's what the over 40,000 people, I think, who've already contributed to me, and I'm proud of them. Nurses, Time, doctors, sir. policemen, firefighters, Time, good, hardworking people. Thank you, Mr. Chris. That's all the time we have now for questions. Next, we turn to each candidate for brief closing statements. We'll start with Mr. Davis. Sir, you have one minute. You know, Charlie sounds a lot tonight like Ronald Reagan, but he really wants to govern like George Bush. He wants to stay the course. He wants to continue a path that has resulted in our schools having almost the lowest graduation rate in the country and the lowest SAT scores. As the father of two sons in public school, I know we can do better. Charlie's offered no plan tonight for insurance companies as well, how we stand up to them. This is more of the same after four years. I have a plan, a plan to lower insurance premiums by as much as 40% next year. And I also have a plan to lower property taxes, not just for homeowners, but for small business and renters. One billion dollars next year is a down payment. We live in a wonderful state. I just think we can do much better. And as our governor, I will fight for change that is long overdue. I will fight to improve our schools, to aim for the highest graduation rates and SAT scores in the country. I will stand up to this very powerful insurance lobby, and I will fight to give everyone in this state a chance to own their own home Time, and leave sir. the American dream. I'm Jim Davis. Would appreciate your support for governor. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Mr. Christ, you have one minute for your closing statement as well. Thank you for watching tonight. You at home are the boss, and I always understand that, and I'll never forget it. It's a pleasure being the Attorney General of the State of Florida and fighting for you. And I do have a plan to get your insurance rates down. That is not a risky scheme that would bail out insurance companies on the back of Florida taxpayers, as my opponent proposes. We need to get a national catastrophic plan. My opponent's been in Washington for 10 years, where they've been talking about that for 10 years, and guess what he's done? Nothing. That's unfortunate, but we've got to move forward. I've already talked to Senator Mel Martinez about the excitement of getting that done, and I know that we can do it. We can lower the Florida CAT Fund to make sure it's more accessible so your premiums truly go down in a responsible way. And stop the cherry picking so the companies who do business in Florida do all business. This is an important decision coming up two weeks from today. It's a decision about who the next governor of Florida will be, and change is coming. If you vote for Charlie Crist, you'll get positive change for a better Florida and a brighter Time, future. Sir. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Christ. That concludes Decision 2006, Before You Vote, the gubernatorial debate. Thanks for watching. I'm Ray Suarez from the Miniachi Theater on the campus of Nova Southeastern University in Broward County, Florida. Have a good night.